Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're going to be talking about standing grips with the rifle. Uh, when it comes to grip on the rifle, uh, we have a lot of options. And because there's so many options, I decided to kind of break it up into different uh, positions uh, as far as shooting positions. So standing is going to be where I'm going to start because that's most likely the default setting that you're going to use, the default position you're going to use, so the default grips that you're going to have to use when it comes to the rifle platform. Uh, grip, support hand grip is generally the category where there's a lot of contention and a lot of different options and there's definitely been a lot of evolution over time as weapon systems have advanced. Um, with the modern AR platform or just really any rifle at all, your primary hand is going to operate the controls of the firearm and it's not going to do much else. Now, there are some uh, concerns about what else the hand is supposed to do, but my feeling is the primary hand operates the weapons controls and provides a pivot point it doesn't actually drive the gun when it comes to the support hand the support hand is going to do one of two things it's either going to assist in providing a natural point of aim or it's going to drive the gun what i mean by drive the gun is that you're actually going to steer from the barrel if you think about a door uh, think about the hinges the door is the strongest relatively speaking at the hinges but we don't open the door from the hinges because it would be more difficult we open the door from the handle, which is furthest away from the hinges. That's just the way doors work. So if you think about this as the hinge, I'm locked in here. This hand grabs the rifle at the handle. That way the door can be more easily moved. So you think about close quarters or, or even intermediate ranges, transitioning from target to target, or maybe just tracking one target. It's not always going to be multiple threats. It may just be one, one threat that moves around a lot. Um, tracking that sight picture, tracking that ideal sight picture, the support hand is going to drive the gun from the barrel, whereas the primary hand is going to operate the firearm's controls and provide a pivot point, uh, a point of stability, an anchor point, a hinge, if you will, for the support hand to drive the gun. Now you go back in time far enough, uh, even on the AR platform, and you find a bunch of different types of grips. Um, the, the modern grip, the so-called thumb over bore grip, which is basically just a very aggressive, almost straight arm or straight arm grip, where the thumb comes over the top of the barrel and provides a support like that, breaks at the wrist, got some sig significant deviation there uh, in the wrist. Uh, that grip actually isn't very new. That grip's been around for quite some time. In fact, the, the, the furthest back I've been able to track it is to Rhodesia. Uh, in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. Actually, there's some photos that you can find online. One, after, one of them was actually circulating for quite a while, soldiers uh, with the FAL practicing that grip. So the grip isn't anything new. It was made popular. Uh, you know, Chris Costa from Costa Ludus made that grip very popular, um, and it also became a bit of a parody. The grip uh, is functional. It's a fast, stable grip for driving the gun. Think about the door again, the hinge, the handle. Using that grip, you're able to transverse to, to traverse, uh, rather, the door very, very quickly. So you're able to drive the gun more quickly and efficiently than some of the older grip styles that you saw. Maybe, you know, if you're in the military or you know somebody in the military that teaches a specific grip that was functional for or was taught at that time, this grip may be able to provide a uh, more positive control of the gun. When I went through the Army, uh, our support hand, literally, that's all it did. It supported the gun. So we'd find a natural point of aim by body positioning, and then this hand would just kind of rest underneath, at that time, the hand guard and later on the rail to provide just a natural point of aim, which is great for Cold War era shooting. Uh, and what I mean by that is assuming that you're going to be more or less in, in trench warfare or, or online warfare, you're going to be shooting at enemies that are far away. Modern combat has shown us, uh, modern rifle use has shown us that the enemy these days is more likely to be closer than he is further, further away. If you think about all the urban conflicts that we've gone through in the past decade, 15 years, um, that natural point of aim grip has kind of been has kind of gone by the wayside because we're we're working in closer quarters, so we need to be able to actually forcefully drive the gun versus relying on a natural point of aim. So now, what does that mean for you as a shooter? Uh, how should your stance uh, incorporate in your grip? Well, all your stance is, and I've, I've done a video on stance before recently, in fact, I'm sure you remember it. Uh, my feeling on stance is stance should be a natural, stable platform. So your rifle should be incorporated into that stance. Uh, you'll find your natural, intuitive point of balance, and it's very easy for you to figure out what works and what doesn't. The closer your feet are together, the less stable you're going to be, so on and so forth. Um, 
The rifle does have some other particulars because the fact that it is longer, depending on you know your barrel length or, or whatever you're using. Uh, if I go into a really aggressive stance, then I do have to reset to move, and that's okay. Uh, so long as you're knowledgeable uh, about the limitations you place yourself in if you really base out and plant into the gun. Another recent uh, point of debate, something we're getting wrapped around the axle on, is uh, squaring to the threat. Here's my feeling on that. You want to square, if you're wearing armor, you definitely want to square your armor to the threat. What you don't want to do is take a round through the side. Um, if you wear side plates, like that's a thing, but I think the majority of the people watching this video probably don't wear body armor for a living. Or if you do, you've already realized the, uh, the realism of the situation is the threat determines if your plates face them or not. So if your guy's mobile, your most important factor is going to be tracking that threat and, and responding to that threat's movement than it is going to be to try to get perfectly square to him before you get in, get in and engage. If he's moving left or right and I've got to track him past a traversing point, then I've got to reset my body and just go with it. So I go back to intuitive stance. Stand intuitively, but with a mind towards squaring if you wear body armor. If you don't wear body armor, just have a think about, or I should say a thought about, are you giving him a complete flank shot? Yes, it does make you harder to hit, but I can tell you right now, and any medical professional will tell you the same thing, a transecting round is hard, is, Something that's not very survival. Yes, you can survive it, but let's not get shot at all. And if we do, let's put ourselves in the best physiological position that we can to, to deal with that situation. So getting specifically to the standing grips that I use, uh, there's basically two of them um, that I prefer, and there's variations of each, because nothing is ever gonna be as textbook as maybe we'd like it to be. I'd love to use the exact same position every single time, provided it was functional. Uh, we talked about that overbore grip. I don't actually go over the top because I found that it does provide asymmetric pressure to the gun under stress and it tends to drive it away from the support hand. So for me, and you may have experienced this yourself, if I'm in the gun and maybe I'm at a little stress based on time or situation or whatever, if I'm really wrenching down on it, I tend to drive the gun a little bit. I tend to put a little torque on it, a little too much torque. I don't really care for that. So for me, um, I'm a hand stop guy for, for most situations. Uh, I think about the same grip I'd use, um, let's say working a shovel, uh, the way you're going to hold a shovel. You know, there's certain ways you hold tools, and, and this is no different. I'm going to apply the same kind of general pressure to the, uh, the, to, the, to the rail, to the fore end, than I would working a shovel, if that makes sense. My thumb is going to rest on the side. It's not going to go over the top. It's going to provide rearward pressure. Now, if I need to drive the gun, I can pull with these fingers or push with my palm. Uh, because... We can only make firearms so ergonomic for our body. There is a, an inequality there when it comes to which direction I'm gonna go. Generally speaking, people, uh, right-handed people, shooting a rifle are gonna be able to drive the gun faster right than they are left. And it's more natural than it is to come back the other way. Now, you could be getting to the minutia. Uh, we're talking about hundreds of a seconds for most situations. But that's my basic grip. As far as my body is concerned, I'm gonna do my best to square to my threat, but I also understand just dealing with ergonomics of, of equipment and situations. If I'm not perfectly square, that's okay. I'm more concerned with getting rounds on threat and being able to naturally, to move the gun as naturally as possible than I am being textbook squared to my threat. Uh, we're not robots, we're not machines. So it's okay to have a little bit of a margin of error in there when it comes to your actual physical position of your threat, because realistically speaking, he's gonna be moving too. So the snapshot that we get from that range mentality of the target's always gonna be facing us and we're always gonna be able to square up and plant and adjust things and take our time and chuck our hair and get that spot off the rail. Okay, now I'm ready to shoot. That's just not realistic. And again, I'm being a little bit flippant, but if you think about it, targets aren't people, people aren't targets. If we're training to deal with a real life threat, we have to account for the fact that he is going to decide what our final sight picture actually looks like. He's also going to decide where that shot can necessarily break. We have a say in it, of course, but the more reactive he is to our presence, the more likely it is that he's going to force us into a position that isn't textbook. Now, using that same uh, same grip, extended grip, you can call it thumb over bore, which technically that's not what I'm doing because I'm not actually going over the top. The only time my thumb goes across the top of the rifle is to work the controls, such as a weapon light, a D-ball, what have you. When it comes to driving the gun, this is my pivot point. This is my hinge. I'm coming into the rifle like so. This hand is going to steer. All this hand does is work the controls. Uh, what I've found is if I try to drive with both hands, try to apply 
pulling pressure here and pushing pressure here, as I come over, I tend to over travel a little bit. I also found that it's not necessarily any faster. So for me, this hand is gonna do all the steering, all the turning, all the working. Go back to that door again. Yeah, the door may be able to open a little faster if I drive from the handle and the hinge, but realistically speaking, I'm gonna to get to be able to get the job done very quickly just using the handle alone. That way there's no uh, inner limb interaction confusion when I'm trying to pivot the gun. Now, when does this grip not make sense? For me, this grip doesn't make sense if I'm going for precision or if I'm going for precision at distance from a standing position. Uh, now remember, this video is only about standing positions. There's a lot of other options that I'm gonna talk about in a future video, but just for this sake, standing positions. This is an aggressive, what I consider a close quarters position. It's not gonna be the most fundamentally sound or the fundamentally stable position as distance increases. When distance becomes a factor, if I'm more concerned with stability for distance than I am with uh, being able to rapidly traverse from target to target or rapidly track a single target, say 100 meter, 200 meter, however far I'm gonna shoot, uh, I can vary my grip very easily to, to allow for that. Now the grip I'm gonna use is a little bit unorthodox to modern uh, gun fighting on the range standards. Uh, it's a variation on what's known as an Olympic grip. It's a standing position, it's inherently stable. Unfortunately, it's not as mobile as your, uh, your, your full extension grip is. And basically with an Olympic grip, I'm gonna wrap into the rifle. Maybe I'll use a C-clamp grip, maybe I won't. It all depends on the situation. What I'm trying to do is get as many points of contact on the rifle surface as I can to provide great degree of stability. It's, again, it doesn't look like a super badass gunfighter grip, but fact remains is it's gonna provide a great degree of stability for longer range shots if I'm standing. So basically, it's gonna look something like this. And all I'm gonna do is find a natural point of aim. In this situation, I'm not so worried about driving the gun with this hand as I am about providing a natural point of aim. So if I sit in on a target and I realize I'm too far right or too far left, I can actually just turn my body. So I'm adjusting with that natural point aim. This is one of the situations where I'm actually turning from the hinge versus trying to drive the gun from the handle. Now, of course, the context of that position uh, it is important. When would I use it versus when I wouldn't use it? Again, there's no textbook definitions of when you should use either position, but if you think about utilizing a very small piece of uh, vertical cover, because cover is going to be vertical or it's going to be horizontal, more one category or the other, um, behind a tree, telephone pole, things like that. Maybe it's in high grass or snow or something like that, and I have to make that long range shot. Uh, for those of you that hunt, I'm sure you've used or have almost used or have seen someone use somewhere in some time in your life a variation of that that position to shoot, you know, game at longer ranges. Uh, just because it's not black and covered in Velcro doesn't mean it can't be tactical based on the situation. Um, it provides a great degree of stability for the rifle. Now, granted, the recoil energy is going to be different because when I'm in my full aggressive gunfighter stance or whatever you want to call it, um, I'm able to, to absorb the recoil into my body in a different way because that energy has to go somewhere. When I'm using an Olympic grip, I'm coming in like this, that energy is coming straight, it's going to dissipate straight out of the rear of the gun, which means it's going to be inherently less stable. Now I can roll a little bit of shoulder into it, but then I'm going to introduce stress into the side of my body and that complicates my ability to maintain a natural point of aim. So that's gonna be a significant issue. This is something that you have to try out for yourself. I mean, it's length is pole specific, it's weapon specific, it's body type specific, and it's situation specific. So I guess my point in so far as that is concerned is these grips are just starting points, but they have to be owned individually to each shooter. Uh, when it comes to these standing shooting positions, these are the two common ones that I use, but there's one more that I will address. All right, the, the uh, the elephant in any conversation about rifle grips is going to be magwell grip, which is basically this. Belief being, it's silly, it's from the 80s, it's dumb, no one's using it anymore, sub guns aren't a thing anymore, this is real popular on the MP5, it's not really popular on the rifle. And here's the thing about it, uh, it does provide stability, it just provides a different sort of stability. Now the longer the rifle, the less inherently stable it's going to be, because what I'm doing is I'm building a shelf. I'm coming in, I'm locking in, hopefully I'll be able to pull that elbow all the way back into the chest, and now I've got a reasonably stable shooting position. 
to work from. The problem is I've got a whole lot of barrel, depending on your barrel length, sticking out from the gun. Magwell grip is one of those grips that I think is very situationally dependent. It doesn't make as much sense standing as it does in other body positions, which we'll address in future videos. However, if it's a spontaneous reaction to a threat from a hands-off administrative situation, I know that's a long conditional sentence, this, and I recognize a threat, it is functionally faster to go to Magwell, possibly, than it is to try to go to full extension. So at least for a brief snapshot in time, I've got a Magwell grip, I've got my initial rounds on target, and I can adjust from there. There is no one true grip. There is no one grip that's going to best address every situation you find yourself in. I am not a proponent of Magwell grip, unless the situation presents in a way that Magwell grip makes sense. If I'm going to brace barricade in off of my hand stop, I may dig that into my cover, my barricade, and then come back to Magwell grip to provide an additional point of contact on the rifle. And then I can drive pivot, if you will, from my contact against the barricade. That's a possibility that I'm willing to accept based on the situation. So when somebody asks me about Magwell grip, my answer is it depends what situation are we talking about. I wouldn't use this as a default because we've kind of progressed past the weapon system that this grip was intended for, this grip was developed for, or where this grip comes from. When it comes to the AR platform, this is an option, but it's definitely not a default or a standard position that I would recommend. It should be pretty evident that there is no easy answer for the situation. Some people want to get into a simple conversation and come up with a very simple solution for the problem. Like I said, there's no one true grip for the rifle. Uh, there's a lot of different grips for a lot of different situations. And some of those grips are naturally intuitive and they don't really have a name. You may find yourself in a physical position that you have to shoot from where you invent a grip that only exists for that moment in that situation. It may be similar to something else, but it's not quite the same and you would only use it in that situation. Uh, we're thinking creatures so we can intuitively adjust our body to become as stable as it needs to be. I know when I get on my optic, especially if I'm shooting distance on a magnified optic, which exaggerates movement, but movement's movement, I know when I'm stable and I know when I'm not. I know if I've got a lot of bounce and I'm chasing my crosshairs or I'm chasing my dot that I need to readjust my position in some way. I also know if I'm applying undue pressure to the front of the rifle or to the rear of the rifle and I start to get that ache, that creep, that fatigue to stop doing it and adjust. So instead of speaking to the lowest common denominator on this topic, what I want people to think about is what is naturally stable versus what isn't. Think about the grip that you're using now and take it to the range and shoot it and see Okay, my standing grip, thumb over bore. When I get on that gun, when I turn the gas on, am I shooting high and left, low and right? Okay, now let me adjust my pressure. Now let me stop driving from the rear or drive more from the front. Or now let me just kind of think about pulling my shoulder out of it a little bit and take stress off of the gun. Is that going to aid in tightening that group up under speed? Um, speed is usually the, the, the biggest and the most harsh judge of your shooting position. The more stable your position is, the faster you can shoot accurately. Not every situation calls for speed, but if your shooting position doesn't allow for it, relatively speaking to what you're trying to accomplish at what distance, then you need to rethink, are you as stable as you can be? Your grip will probably be something like mine or a variation on it, but it's not gonna be the exact same grip. And just like with handguns, people talk about proper finger placement or proper grip. It's gonna be slightly different for every single person because everybody is different. You've got different lengths of poles, you've got different size hands, different body concerns, different positions, different range of motion, all factor into. So when I talk about rifle shooting positions, what I introduce to students when I teach is a foundation for them to build on versus this is the way you have to do it. Now, there are value added uh, points that we have to talk about like you hold it this way for this reason you shouldn't vary it you shouldn't vary from that or deviate from that any more than you absolutely have to um, you can't necessarily be a unique snowflake so so much as you are going to take the, the the outline the foundation and adjust it to your specific lifestyle or your specific physical concerns uh, woe to the student that wants to just create their own, for no reason, uh, rifle shooting position just because they want to be different. And that's, that's just not what we want to do. The reason that these things become foundational and become institutional and become fraternal is because they work. You know, Sometimes different isn't better. Sometimes doing something exactly the same or as close as you can as the guy next to you is actually good if you look at his absolute performance. If he's shooting better and faster than you, 
maybe you should talk to him and find out what he's doing differently. If you're looking at him and you're like, well, I'm, I'm holding the rifle the same way. Why is this guy faster than me? Why is this guy sh shooting, shooting better than me, more accurately, me, more consistent than me? You never know till you ask. So rifle stances, standing. That forward grip, we've got that Olympic grip. Those are the two that I would recommend as default positions for standing and shooting. But remember what I said, you can have variations in there based on the environment and the situation that you have to shoot from. When you factor in cover and, and environment and, and weather conditions and things of this nature and distance and body positionings and terrain features and shooting downhill versus shooting uphill, those standard positions quickly kind of start to meld together based on the situation. So when you're practicing standing and shooting grips, think about having just kind of two that you can go with. One that's going to give you really good uh, speed up close and then something for that you can use at intermediate to even longer ranges from standing if you're forced to take that standing shot. I'm Aaron Cowan with Stage Dynamics. Train accordingly.